Data analysts have labeled the simplest form of analytics descriptive analytics. It most likely got its start in ancient Egypt around 700 BC for the purposes of governance. Think of a simplified version of the ancient Egyptian government. Its main bureaucratic function was to collect taxes from its citizens to fund whatever capital projects the pharaoh deemed necessary. Taxes in those times were typically a portion of your harvest or produced goods. So how would a tax collector in ancient Egypt approach his data set? Intuitively, the tax collector would calculate the total number of bushels produced for that year, maybe the average number of bushels produced per month, the average number of bushels produced in a year per farmer. That tax collector would have just conducted descriptive analytics, which uses the techniques of aggregation to quantify what has happened. Descriptive analytics is dominated by methods around counting. Descriptive analytics is the domain of standard business and ad hoc reporting. For most small medium businesses, 75% of reporting and analysis will be in the descriptive analytics realm. If it's a bar chart or a line chart or a pie chart, it's most likely descriptive analytics. The tools and techniques required to conduct descriptive analytics are cost-effective and common. Excel, Google Sheets, SQL, etc. The most common example of descriptive analytics are key performance indicators, or KPIs, high-level quantitative measurements of a business strategic, financial, and operational achievements. The limitations of descriptive analytics should be obvious with these examples. Descriptive analytics only provides knowledge of the past, and is typically limited to quantitative measures. Remember back to these KPI examples? They all measured what has happened, but there is no explanation of why or how it happened and no indication of what will happen in the future.